What are you, Royster Doisters? Jules Guides here. And today we're back in Mayfair. We're going to be walking over towards Belgravia with my good friend and cameraman, Simon. Let's do it. Yeah, Albemarle Street is uh, one of my favourite streets because it's, it's got so much history and so many interesting things in it. For example, the Royal Institution, which was opened up in, I think, 1799 by a bunch of scientists who encouraged progress of uh, science. And, you know, they've got these really famous Christmas lectures there, which they've been doing since, I think, Michael Faraday did the first one in 1825. And he discovered something to do with the rotary systems, electric rotary, God knows what, in the basement there. But anyway, that led to the invention of the electric motor. It all happened right here, folks. And just along there is Brown's Hotel. That is where the first long distance phone call was made by Alexander Graham Bell. Wow. Our famous patrons include Oscar Wilde, both Roosevelt's, Agatha Christie, and many others. This is where Rudyard Kipling finally finished The Jungle Book. I think it took him over a year or something. I'm a slow reader myself, I suppose. Maybe the guy over there will know, I don't know. First one-way street in London. The first ever one-way street in London? One-way street is oh. this one. Oh, all right. So many arcades around here, they're beautiful. And then this scruffy gentleman is sort of making the place look disreputable. Look at you. That number 13 is the old Albemarle Club, covered in scaffolding now, sadly. But that's where Oscar Wilde was. He was a member there, and then he, he was drinking in there, and, and he received a note from the Marcus of Queensbury, who was the father of Lord Alfred Douglas, who I think was uh, the lover of Oscar Wilde. And the note said to Oscar Wilde, posing as a sodomite. Oscar Wilde was a little bit offended by this, and so he took the Marcus of Queensbury to court, um, but Oscar Wilde lost, and uh, he ended up being sent to Reading Jail for homosexuality. He actually had kids and he was married. Yeah. You know, you'd think that might be quite a good uh, defence. So just along here at number 50 is where Lord Byron's publisher was. He was associated with scandal, sodomy, bigamy, incest, and that made him, yeah, like a celebrity. He was, uh, do you know any Lord Byron fan? I don't, <laughs> I don't know any, but at the time he was uh, absolutely massive. He caught a fever after fighting in the Greek War of Independence. So when he died in Greece, he gave instructions to his friends to uh, bring his memoirs here to John Murray, his publisher. But John Murray just thought, there's no way I can publish this stuff, it's too raunchy. And so infamously, he burned the whole lot in the fireplace here at number 50 Albemarle Street, and the fireplace is still there. It's so sad because they would have been so interesting, these memoirs. Uh, this is Berkeley Square, and although I can't hear a nightingale sing, these are supposedly the oldest plane trees in London. These were planted in 1789, these trees. It's supposed to be famous for its plane trees. And over there, actually, that's uh, number 44. That's the, the Claremont Club, where uh, Lord Lucky Lucan was supposed to be going to meet his friends for a gambling session in 1974, before he suddenly disappeared. Well, just coming up on the right here is actually it's the Lansdowne Club. You know, there's all these gentlemen's clubs all over Pall Mall and Mayfair. And um, originally this was a Lansdowne house. And actually Harry Gordon Selfridge used to live here. The guy who started up Selfridges, the big department store. I mean, I've seen pictures of this and it needs to just be a nice big grand estate in the middle of some open fields. It's just so hard <laughs> to believe that it's just stuck here wedged between all these buildings, you know. That, that over there, that's Half Moon Street in P.G. Woodhouse, Jeeves and Worcester. That's where Jeeves has his rooms so that he has easy access to you know, the clubs of Mayfair oh, and Pall Mall, yeah. Actually, and no doubt, Worcester would have visited G.F. Trumper. Yes, it was opened by George F. Trumper in the late 19th century for the discerning gentleman. Wooden canes and umbrellas, cufflinks, uh, very Jules Guides type place actually, except for the fact they wouldn't let me film inside there. Although I did used to go and have my hair cut there when I was very young. All these traditional fragrances and perfumes like Wellington, Spanish leather, Aster, Curzon. You wearing any cologne today, Simon? No, I'm not, no. Yeah. If you want one of those old-fashioned shaves, proper cutthroat razor. Oh, splendid. And just over here is Shepherd's Market. Actually, this is where the original May Fair was in the 1700s. They used to have a fair here every year for hundreds of years. And then 
think they became too rowdy and uh, the local posh residents started to complain. Historically, this was the seedy part because, um, because over there was the big Grosvenor estate and everything and then this was a bit more of a seedy kind of area. But, but by chance, it seems to have remained that way. And um, even hundreds of years later, there are loads of brothels around here. So if you want to, I don't know why I'm whispering. I mean, I've got a microphone on. They're, they're, they're around here, there's lots of open doors and stuff, encouraging trade. <laughs> what do you reckon? Look. There's a door open over there. I'm not officially saying there's anything dodgy about it. I'm just. Why don't you go in? Yeah, and I'll meet you in half an hour up the road. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be a knocking shop. Right? It's got to be. <laughs> well, is anybody in there? Well, there's just a kind of seedy looking carpet and sort of some stairs <laughs> going up suggestively. Right? <laughs> okay, so, so just two We're steps not that up. kind of guides. No. And over there is the Saudi Embassy. They certainly know how to look after themselves, don't they? Look at that beautiful building which uh, we'll have to film surreptitiously because they've got two armed guards out there, unsurprisingly. Wish me luck as you wave me goodbye Cheerio, here I go on my way You watch stuff like King Kong, the original version, and stuff like that. I'm sure it was J. Arthur Rank. At the, at the start, there was always a, a man with a big gong. and he was Mass, just go, Muscly man. Bong. Bong. A bit like me, man. then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Gong. J. Arthur Rank. It's rhyming yeah. slang, isn't it? You're a bit of a J. Arthur, aren't you, Simon? Yeah. <laughs> This is, uh, this is South Audley Street, this is where Audrey Hepburn used to live oh, where she, when she first moved to London. Yeah, South Audley Street. I remember I was obsessed with her for many years. I read her biography. Look, that's really cool. Look at those things outside the house there. That's a really old house. You know what these things are? These are like for putting out, I think these are torch extinguishers. You used to, back in the old days, before street lamps, you used to have little boys would run along with uh, lit torches oh, and at night time. They'd light the way for you through the streets. And when you arrived at your house, the, he, he, could, he could put it in there and put his, put his torch out. <laughs> I've been looking for one of those. That's great. But you love stuff like that, Simon. Amazing. Don't you find that sort of stuff I do, I do, I do. Give me a smile, I can keep a in my heart. Seems like a bit of an odd place for a statue to be. Right in the middle of a traffic island, in the middle of Park Lane. Feel a little bit sorry for Lord Byron up there, cutting a bit of a disconsolate figure. Of course, when they first put up that statue, it would have been all just fields around here. But uh, yeah, Lord Byron, he was described as being mad, bad and dangerous to know by Lady Caroline Lamb. Was that his girlfriend? She also sent him her pubic hair in the post, much to the delight of my mother, who never tires of telling me that story. Seems apt that he's been abandoned in the middle of a traffic island, much like he was by the British, really, because his life was considered too scandalous to have him buried in Poet's Corner in Westminster Abbey, so they had to bury him somewhere else. That statue up there is uh, Achilles, went up in 1822, cast from the guns captured at the Battle of Waterloo, I think. It was the first nude statue in London, apparently, but uh, to spare the blushes of ladies, they put a fig leaf over his private parts. So if you're in Hyde Park Corner, you may have a chance to go to Apsley House, which is the big house behind me. It's, a, it's known as Number One London. Taxi drivers love it if you get in and they go, where, where to, mate? And you go, Number One London. They, they know exactly where to bring you. And it's called Number One London because it was the first house that people would arrive at when they came through the toll gate at Knightsbridge. Um, but it's actually the Duke of Wellington's house. I mean, the Duke of Wellington was the guy who, with a big nose who defeated Napoleon. Even today, the current Duke of Wellington still lives upstairs. It's quite amazing. He's, uh, the, the, the downstairs is a museum and a, and a very good museum. And there's a uh, 10 foot high giant statue of Napoleon in there. It's quite amazing. It was actually made for Napoleon, but Napoleon didn't like it. Um, and then after he got defeated, it was sold to the British government and given to the Duke of Wellington as a kind of gift. Yes, the Duke of Wellington, pioneer of the Wellington boots. He didn't want to get his feet muddy whilst he was on campaign. <laughs> when a man soils a Wellington, he puts his foot in it. This is Belgrave Square, really posh. I mean, now it's all just embassies and stuff. But yeah, I mean, 
proper like expensive in it. Don't you think that post box over there reminds you of the post box at the beginning of Danger Mouse? But Danger Mouse comes out of the curve underneath it. Goes out of the yeah, so there it is behind me. Number 46 Lower Belgrave Street it was the scene of bloody murder in 1974. So Richard John Bingham was a seventh Earl of Lucan and he was an aristocrat and professional gambler, if there's such a thing. And he, he was quite famous for being a bit of a playboy. In 1963, he married Veronica Duncan and they had three kids. But then after the marriage started to break down, they had this really bitter custody battle and he accused her of being mental and he wanted the kids and she wouldn't give them. In 1974, the children's nanny was found bludgeoned to death in the basement. Lucan's wife was also attacked and she accused him and she came running out of here and she ran down to the pub at the end of the road saying, oh my, my husband, he's gone crazy, he's trying to kill me. And Lord Lucan, he ran away and uh, he was supposed to meet his friends down in Barclay Square, but uh, he ended up borrowing his friend's car. And later, the car was found totally abandoned in New Haven with a bloody lead piping in the boot. And he was never seen again. And it's one of the greatest mysteries which has uh, captured the imagination of the British public ever since. Many rumours abound about what happened to him, actually. Some people say that he still exists and uh, he managed to run away and escape to Africa and sightings have been uh, reported in South America and all sorts. He could still be alive somewhere. He could, he, could be, he could be roaming about in London somewhere. Lord Lucan, if you're, if you're watching, get in touch on Jules Guy. <laughs> <laughs> Leave a comment below. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pint at the Star Tavern, Simon? This is where they planned the great train robbery. Oh, Come on. I wonder where Phil Collins sat. Cheers, Simon. Cheers, Julian. Cheers. Cheers. Well, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And uh, if you want a private guided tour of London, then just head over to my website, jewelsguides.com, where you can find out more about me, buy some tasteful Jules Guides merchandise. <laughs> or leave a donation if you like on PayPal or become my Patreon. Cheers.